The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. In this unique dispensation of the church age, each and every believer's heart, mind, and soul have to be tested with the purpose to cleave, to glorify that Lord with maximum glorification as we lead along to be developed to the standards of maturity of Christ when we take Bible doctrine as number one priority. As long as we fail to have that purpose in our hearts and to readily obey as our Lord God, the Holy Spirit guides us in his wisdom till the time we are the greatest failures of all time. What is happening today? Today, there are, enough, there are not enough men who could look upon the purpose of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's ministry. Because we could be exemplified this in a very simple example which Daniel and his fellow three men did and asked the eunuchs of the king to provide them a food of vegetables rather than the meat dedicated to those idols. Daniel didn't want him to defile himself with such kind of a diet because he knew what was the Old Testament teaching and he wanted to stay pure irrespective of the things they have been dedicated to the ideals or the food, food restriction code what they had. He never wanted to touch the food that has been given to the idols. That was the great purpose of Daniel's heart. That was the great truth, what he can bind up. And that purpose should be in you and me as a bona fide gifted pastor teacher. If you have that purpose to really glorify the Lord, and that purpose in your heart that you need to communicate the entire word from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21, that purpose of your heart will be fulfilled with the divine wisdom which Lord leads. Because the eunuchs, when they asked the law, the, the, Daniel, he said, why can't you take a trial only for 10 days? Because Nebuchadnezzar, who brought them to their captivity, he knew that the God of Israel was given to those people of Israel that divine wisdom. But Nebuchadnezzar didn't know that God has given that wisdom to the people of Israel only when they truly have a purpose and a desire and an attitude to obey his word. We find a prayer in Jeremiah in chapter 16. It tells to us, Why Lord has forsaken them? Because their fathers and their forefathers have forsaken them. And the children now what they are, they have not only forsaken, but they have even gone still further from forsaking the Lord, and they have been acting very, very treacherously, saith our Lord. And do I not think it is best, best for me to leave them out and not consider the truth? That's what our Lord asked the question to the people of Jeremiah time. The same passage is what we can note with the exact replica towards the life of Daniel. When he was taken into captivity, prior to that he might have been taught at home the ritualistical code or the food code which the Israelites have to consume. And his purpose in the heart was to obey God and not to defile himself. The purpose of his heart was to stay pure. And how did Lord lead him? Marvelously Lord led him. That's what today, dear brethren, you and I need to understand. Though our fathers failed, though our children go to an extreme end of degeneracy or apostasy, 
We, the church age believers, at this Alec Nikites is constantly being enlightened under the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. We have to have a purpose in our heart. That purpose is to glorify my Lord by learning and knowing the truth under the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And if there is no purpose in your heart, then you will never really obey my Lord readily, which he demands in our lives to be obeyed. When there is no purpose in our heart, we can never understand why Lord will do those things which are very great for him to look. When you will wake up to realize how Lord has really protected you from being endangered into false doctrines, how Lord has really protected you, not falling into a trap of the gibberish speaking of emotional of tongues, not really falling into a trap of false doctrines. Your purpose should be true to Lord God Almighty. Daniel's purpose was only one simple point. I should not defile my body which has been given to the sacrifice of God. Today, how many of us are really giving a real sacrifice of our body as a living realm to Christ? Is it been defiled by the lusty patterns of this world? As Daniel's time we could find the defilement with the food served to idols. Today the defilement, the flesh being served to the lust patterns of this old sin nature. How many of us are being really with the purpose that this body is a living sacrifice unto Christ now and I have to renovate the thinking? And that renovation of the thinking demands Bible doctrine, and I need to stick upon that truth. How many of us have really known that point of understanding, dear brethren? Since we do not know, nor apply, nor understand this truth, we are the people not capable of understanding what it is to really obey God's word. No purpose, no definition, no meaning. No renovation of the thinking to look and to understand that we are in this unique dispensation of the church age. As long as we fail to understand this, we are the people never capable of understanding why we need to obey that great Lord to fulfill his great purpose. Dear brethren, God has given you in your heart a purpose to glorify him through the prayer which he has prayed in John 17:17. 17, 17. Have you not known the glory which has been given to Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has been given to us? And the purpose for you in your heart is to constantly glorify Him, constantly take upon Him, and constantly be led upon Him by the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by not grieving Him, nor squelching Him, but rather living in the Spirit. How many days more, dear brethren, you want to waste your time without having a life of a purpose? Life of a meaning, life of a definition. Daniel purposed in his heart that he should not obey to the idols, though they have been put in the fire. But rather today, the so called pastors are occupying the pulpits. They have really purposed in their hearts to exchange the glory of Lord to a lie. They have really purpose to their lust patterns that they need to obey. A sure arts of theology, sure arts of miracles or healings or speaking in tongues, sure arts of morality, sure arts of oratories. They have purpose in their hearts to tell this sort of stupid things, and one man he tells, he has purposed that he is interested to write the pilgrimage trips proverbs not the Proverbs of the Bible, but what he has been learning to write from his own thing, and he calls, these are the Proverbs of life in this pilgrimage trip. Moron doesn't even know that there are great philosophical teachers who have written greater philosophical text than him, and he calls that the Holy Spirit has led him to write these things. Really, it's very pathetic, dear brethren, to note, among the midst of our lives, Though we have been given the completed canon of scripture without having a true purpose of your heart to exegete the word, to isolate the word, to categorize the word under the dispensing technique of dispensations and to use the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher effectively to train them up. 
until and unless you use it, until and unless you are being chosen to be trained up under the faithful ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. When you have been faithfully prepared, because you have been given the bona fide gift of a pastor, until then you do, you do not have a purpose to glorify that Lord to the maximum. You never have a purpose to glorify that Lord to the maximum, dear brother. Never. Never ever in your life. That's why your purpose is to obey your lust patterns. Try to attract crowd. Try to raise creams. Try to ask by begging money to sponsor for your programs. And to give various examples telling that my church has been constructed in 54 days. See how many people that are attending this church. What you will do if your church has been constructed in 54 days or not? What do you want to do with that church? Rise stupid thoughts, stupid behaviors, stupid mentality. Aren't you ashamed that you don't have the true purpose to execute the word of the Lord and you call so many people that are following you in the congregation, so many people that are happy to appreciate you for your work? Get out of such kind of a stupid mental thoughts, dear brother. The true purpose of a pastor teacher is to get each and every believer to the completeness in the knowledge of Christ, to the perfection which they have to be led to the spiritual maturity to live the unique spiritual life in the three adult stages of this unique real one which has been termed out as Yusabaya, godliness. That perfection is not possible for you until and unless you as a pastor teacher first be trained up under the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the importance. But without the true purpose to glorify that Lord, Lord God, the Holy Spirit will never even touch you. Your intention is not correct. Your aim in life is not right. Lord God, the Holy Spirit will never even touch you to look those scriptures diligently and to know the burden with our heart. What was there, what it was to be, and what it is now. The exact friends of the Israelites you are following, aren't you? Israel nation couldn't long stand for 1,000 years. And the ministry of the prophets was been totally seized. Started in 1441, ended in 450 BC. The remaining 450 years was a silent period. Till to the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ on this earth. That thousand years, though they had the prophetical ministry, it couldn't sustain the nation to stand to the word of the Lord. But now in this church age from AD 30 till this 2015, what we are looking through, purely because of the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we are capable of sustaining. And though we have been given the completed can of scripture from AD 30 to AD 96, the New Testament epistles as well as the Old Testament doctrine combined together and we have been told to remember the memniscola of doctrine in our soul through Rhema, not through Lagos. We are here to be put in our heart, mind and soul and spirit. The doctrine of our Lord and because we have been constantly indwelled by the Trinity of God, the Holy Spirit, we are capable of sustaining till the rupture could occur, whichever day it may be, we do not know. Maybe Lord knows better why you are sustaining this till. And the promise what he has told for us, none should perish but everyone to be saved. Not only being saved, everyone should come to know and learn the knowledge of Christ. That is his purpose, that's why he's sustaining on it. What is our purpose now? Are we capable of delineating the word from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 20-21 under the concept of ice teaching of all the dispensing technique of dispensations in our pulpits? As our purpose is capable of being fulfilled? Can we do it? Can we tell it? Can we claim it? Can we proclaim it? Can we manifest it in our lives by our teaching of that word? You need to look over that those issues once again, dear brethren. Because we cannot stay away from the true purpose of our Lord wherewith he has kept us alive to make every believer perfect and complete. And you are not an apostle as morons think they are apostles. You are not a prophet as idiotic sheer ruts of people think they are prophets. When the Bible has been completed in the canon of Scripture, there are only permanent spiritual gifts into force, and that permanent spiritual gift is a pastor, teacher, evangelist, administrations, gift of help over the management, 
giving, to propagate the missionary message, and not any other things which they can think it is possible for them. Dear brethren, in this unique dispensation of the church, what we are going through, it's of great importance for us to note that we need to have patience by stabilizing our heart for the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we shall, you should not be afraid of the evil tidings because our heart is fixed, confining in Jehovah. Because there are two things which constitute the joy for a Christian. And that will be our strength on the road and the object constantly before his heart. Number one, to present communion and fellowship with Lord God the Father and with the Son of our Lord and Jesus Christ with the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit by using rebound. By using rebound and to be controlled of the Spirit. And the second is the hope of the coming of our Lord. And this too cannot be separated without loss to the souls. For we cannot have all the profit without both of them. But what is happening today? There are not enough men who can tell to us the truth very confidently. There are not enough men who can explain us this truth. Because they themselves are not having a true purpose in their hearts. They themselves are not being guided by Lord God the Holy Spirit because they don't have a proper desire to love that Lord. They don't have a proper desire to love the truth. They are not been having that strength of character or stability. They are not having that perseverance, that motivation, that momentum. They are not able have they're, they're, they're not able to have that sharing the happiness of our Lord or to be occupied with Christ. Whatever purpose in their heart is why they are entering the ministry, number one, to fulfill the lust patterns of the belly. Number two, to make a big bank balance. Number three, cheat the people. What it is tomorrow we shall have a look at the judgment seat of Christ. If you could really filter yourself, do you really have the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher to communicate the word? If you really have the bona fide gift, you will stop all those sheer rots of morality and sheer rots of theology, and they will come and start with isagogical, categorical, and exegetical explanation of the word in your pulpits. Erasmus, the reformer leader in 14th century, told to Martin Luther, Zwingli, and Calvin, who were students of him, very clearly, no scientific explanation of the word. Only exegesis, exegesis, and exegesis should be the order of the pulpit. Without the original languages of the word to be communicated, then begins to say there is no purpose of a pastor teacher. The pastor teacher has purely lost the true purpose. And that's why the pastor teacher has been a sure out of a liar in the pulpits. That's why the pastor teacher has really lost the true wisdom and the true definition. But Daniel was having a purpose in his heart to stay pure to the Lord. Can we be having that purpose in our hearts to stay pure to our Christ? When he was staying pure to the Lord, Lord guided him through the divine wisdom so that he was readily available to obey that God's word and to correct his path. And at the end of his life, he was the one who has written for us the 70 weeks. The things which Lord intended upon their people, the people of Gent the people of Israelites. He was a key man to know those things. And he was a key man not only to know those things, but retired as a Babylonian prime minister, the third of the highest of the ranks. What a blessing it would be for you to have a true purpose in your heart. Motivated by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to stick for that truth. Not to deal with our Lord very treacherously, as we find many people today dealing with our Lord very treacherously. And we are finding so many people in the pulpits not having true definition of their life. Constantly begging upon their tithe. Constantly trying to attract the woman crowd by making a woman preacher to have authority over the men. This man, they are representing the Gentile nature to the core for their ideal practices, which they used to do earlier. First, they should learn the truth so that the truth shall set them free. Then they should apply the principles derived from the truth and the true order of the worship of the pulpits, which Lord God Almighty can serve you, can make you, can get your trend. 
And as long as you fail to understand the simple things, you will be a thorough prey for the scientific methodology, the way these people are coming around. You will become a prey for X, Y, Z things which you think you can do it. And you will become a prey to those people which Lord has called as reprobate mind. And appropriate minds are those people who do not have true purpose of glorifying my Lord because they are wise in their own consight, but never they are wise to do God's work. So, dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide in the next step. We shall continue our discourse. With our headboard and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order to be link to Lord God the Father, that you believe upon Christ, that is the moment itself, we shall have this eternal truth. The eternal truth for you is for very simple. Believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. For the believers, the great man, it is to be controlled of the Spirit by using rebound, and to grow in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine by searching the Scriptures diligently. And whereas for the pastor teachers, the great mandate is to preach the word, Kerisothon Lagan. But I am out from a witnesses by which they have been called, the indwelling Trinity, Bible in our hands. And the great I am out from our witnesses are being our hearers in our pulpits. If there are no hearers, do not worry. Besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. But ultimately, what is our purpose? Our purpose is to execute the word from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21. Not becoming a prey for the shearers, but rather becoming a prey for God's glory. So which way you want to go, you decide. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that thou hast given to our fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will enlighten us in these things. Father, and let us to know thy true purpose, thy true definition, thy true glory to be maximized by living and executing the protocol plan of God, followed by the three adult stages of this unique spiritual life, spiritual self-esteem, spiritual autonomy, and then by spiritual maturity. So that, Lord, we could know the true purpose of our heart, and we could be readily obeyed to follow thy word to the praise of thy glory in your grace. To this extent, we pray that, Lord God, the Holy Spirit will enlighten us for we ask it in Christ's name, Sovereign Lord. Amen.